kids podcast. <laughs> you can go slow. A kids podcast about. Hello, my name is Ari, and I help produce this show you're listening to. I wanted to take a moment to say thank you for being here with us. It means so much that you're choosing to spend your time listening to this show and hearing what we've made for you. We truly couldn't do this without you. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to Camp Adventure. Camp is in your living room. Camp is in your car on the way to the store. Camp is under your blanket fort. Camp is everywhere. And Camp Adventure is for everyone, no matter where in the world you are. And camp counselors Ben and Hannah are ready to welcome you. It's week number three at camp, and this week we're exploring teamwork. I'm Camp Counselor Ari, and I am so excited to welcome you back to camp. It's a beautiful day at Camp Adventure. Let's say hello to Counselor Ben to kick things off. Well, thank you, Ari. Thank you very much. And thank you, campers, for joining me for our third week. This is our third week of Camp Adventure. Do you believe it's already been three weeks? I know. It's crazy. You know what the ancient philosophers and great explorers of old used to say? They used to say, and I think some still say today, uh, that time goes fast when you're having fun. So maybe that's why I can't believe three weeks have already gone by so fast, because we're having lots of fun, you know? I hope that wherever you are, you're having some pretty good summer fun. However, I know that things might not be super fun. They could be pretty hard where you are, so I hope that you're having fun. But if things don't feel very fun right now, that's okay, too. Sometimes life can be pretty hard. And here's the secret that I have learned on my adventures. And I have had lots of adventures, you know. And on every adventure uh, that I've ever been a part of, and I'm not messing around here, on every adventure I have ever had, the best fun happens when I belong to a team. There is something wonderful about belonging to a team. And that is what our story today is going to be all about. Learning to be a part of a team. If you think about it, Being part of Camp Adventure is kind of like becoming part of a team. We gather together each week for story time and for songs and, of course, the mailbag. And we're working on projects together each week. So this truly is a team effort. It's so good. And this week's story is going to be about a chocolate team. (laughs) It's not a... No, you might think, is he talking about a team of people who are made out of chocolate? And I do think that would be an amazing team. I would love to see a bunch of chocolate people on a team. But this week's story is about a team of kids, regular human being kids like you and me, uh, who build something with chocolate. And it's a true story. But we'll have to get to that story later because right now we got to join together in that very special way, just like we do every week at camp where we sing our camp songs with our fearless leader, Hannah. She's a true teammate. She's always working with others, creating beautiful music and sharing it with you and me and the whole world. And she helps us sing together every week. I don't know if you found yourself, but I find myself actually humming the camp song during the week. You know, adventure, adventure. So let's uncover and discover great adventures bright and new. You know, I remember, I sing it all the time. So my fellow camp adventure campers, It is that time to introduce you once again to the ferociously kind and talented woman who always prefers to take off her shoes and go barefoot. The one who always sprinkles extra sugar on her Cheerios. The one who never goes to bed before midnight. Please welcome with me our one and only Camp Adventure music leader, Hannah Glaver, Hannah Glaver. Thank you, Ben. Man, I just love you campers, and every week I love singing with you. Music is the best. Am I barefoot right now just like Ben said? Why, yes indeed I am, and from my house to wherever you are, know that I'm wiggling my toes and saying hello to you. 
might be a little weird, but I'm doing it. So if you are also barefoot right now, I want to ask that you'll return the favor. Would you join me and just stick those bare feet up in the air and wiggle your toes as fast as you can? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure that looks all kinds of crazy awesome. Now, I can't come up with all these super rad ideas that I think of by myself. I've discovered that when we work together, even bigger ideas and adventures that I never could have imagined come to life. Have you ever dreamt up something and it was sure to be great? But your brains were only so big and your arms could only lift so much weight. If we learn to work together, we could make new dreams come true. That's right, life is better with each other. So let's discover something new. All right, here comes the chorus. Let's sing this together. Adventure, we venture. Together with courage, we learn and grow strong. We learn from each other. So let's discover and uncover great adventures, bright and new. You know what, y'all? That sounded great, but let's try it a little bit faster this time, especially at the end. What do you think? I, I think you could do it. All right, here we go. Adventure, we venture together with courage. We learn and grow strong. We learn from each other. So let's discover and uncover great adventures, right and new. You campers sound awesome. Thank you for joining me again, and a special thank you to all of my teammates here at Camp Adventure, because without you, my teammates, we would not have all of the awesome mail from all of our awesome campers. I want to see what you listeners, my Camp Adventure team, are creating these days. So we're going to give a holler to my friend Camp Counselor Kenya, who is in charge of our mailbag this week. But she tends to be out in the mountains of Oregon. So instead of a drum roll this week, we have to give her a yodel. Oh, Camp Counselor Kenya! Oh, wow. Did you hear that echo? Let's try that again and see if she hears us. Would you join with me? Camp Counselor Kenya! Oh, I think I can see her now. Take it away, you sweet mailbag queen from the Pacific Northwestern Alps. Hey, everyone. I'm Camp Counselor Kenya, and I'm here with the mailbag. It's where we keep all the mail we receive from campers, like you. Okay, let's open the bag here and let's see what we got. Oh, I see something. Our first mail. It's a photo from Camp Adventure Camper Julia in Maryland. Julia's holding a flag with a unicorn and a rainbow. It's Camp Unicorn. Oh, and here's another photo. It's a camper standing in front of a blanket fort with a flag that reads, Winter in the Woods. The note says it's from Jonah, brother of Julia. That's so awesome. Campers, have you set up your fort yet? Did you name it and make a flag for your camp? Did any of you create a raft for Camp Counselor Ben's floating challenge from week two of camp? We'd love to know about your camp experiences. And so do all of our camp adventure campers and families and friends. Send us photos and videos and mail to listen at a kidspodcastabout.com or on social media using hashtag AKBA summer. We'll share as many things as we can from our mailbag each week. That's listen at a kidspodcastabout.com or on social media using hashtag AKBA summer. And that's all I have. Have a great day at camp. Hey, campers, it's Camp Counselor Matthew. For those that know my voice and for those that don't yet, hi, nice to meet you. I'm the games director at Camp Adventure, and today our game is Scavenger Hunt. Let me explain the rules and then we'll get started. A scavenger hunt is a game where the leader says a handful of objects and the first person to return with those objects is declared the winner. Now, I know that you're all doing camp in different places and different spaces, Bedroom, family room, backyard, in the backseat of a car, up in a tree fort, in a submarine? Hey, you never know. No matter where you are, try to get as many of these items as you can. 
And through the magic of podcasts, we won't have to wait for everyone to finish their scavenger hunt. In fact, we'll all finish at the exact same time. Wait and see. Okay, so I'm going to tell you the five items you're going to try and bring back to me today. Feel free to compete against a grown-up, a sibling, a friend, or just race against the clock to see if you can get the fastest time. Be careful about moving around your space, of course. After I tell you the five items, pause the show when you hear the ticking clock. If you're the first person to return with all the items, unpause. You can also set a timer if you want to limit the length of your scavenger hunt. All set? All right. The five items I'd like you to find today are... A book, a rubber band, a toy, something shiny, and finally, something fuzzy. One item per category, so you should have five things total. One more time, the items I'd like you to find today are a book, a rubber band, a toy, something shiny, and finally, something fuzzy. Good luck. Cue the timer and pause the show. Time's up. How many things were you able to find? Holy wow, what a bounty. Nice job. And what did I tell you? We're all back here at the exact same time. I'll be back next week with more games. Let me know if you have any favorites that we can all play. See ya. All right, campers. After this break, we're going to hear a story from Camp Counselor Ben. And I promise you won't want to miss it. Hey there, listeners, Ari here. Have you been listening to an episode and heard kid voices just like yours, asking questions and telling us super cool facts? Maybe like this? What type of adventures are there? Do you know, to see at night as well as an owl, you will need eyes as big as grapefruits? Wow, what curious and thoughtful minds you all have. We'd love to hear from you and include you in the show. Just write to us with your grown-up at listen at a kid's podcast about.com and we'll tell you all about the awesome opportunities for you to share and get involved and thank you to lily and kai for contributing their voices and to you too i'm so excited to hear from you Here at A Kid's Company About, we make podcasts, but also books, classes, and even more for kids and families just like yours. We've got a couple new and upcoming books in our Little Book About Board Book series, embracing toddlerhood's most essential topics. Here's one of our authors sharing a sneak peek. Hey, my name's Alicia, and I'm the author and illustrator of A Little Book About Grit, a new book in the series about what it means to never give up and how that superpower supercharges your growth. Learn more about A Little Book About Grit by visiting akidsco.com. Okay, we're back and it's story time. Are you excited? Me too. So let's get ready for this week's story. This week, I have a special instruction for you. Check with your grown-up if it's okay to have a piece of chocolate for this story. Because this story is about that sweet, wonderful treat, chocolate. But if now isn't the time for chocolate, that's totally okay. Maybe just grab a different kind of snack like some carrots or apples or whatever else would be a nice treat. Now, let's do our stretches. Let's move our bodies around like we're big octopuses. And let's get cozy. You can even hit pause right now to find the perfect listening spot for the week. Wherever you go, get comfy. Are you ready, Counselor Ben? Ari, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. I am ready for story time, for sure. As usual. And this week our story is called The Chocolate Castle. And yes, we are talking about real chocolate right now, my campers. And I think you're going to like this story. And I think we should just start it right away. Do you agree? I agree. So The Chocolate Castle story starts when I was a kid in high school. 
I was living in the same little town in Wisconsin that I've been talking about in these past two stories, where my little gray house was across from the Fox River in Burlington, Wisconsin. But in this story, we start when I'm a high school student and I'm in my favorite of all the classes at school, which was art class. I love art class so much. Mrs. Kazarian was the art teacher who was teaching our pottery class one day. So we're working with clay. You know, it gets all sticky on your hands and we're making clay pots. And some days we made clay sculptures. One time I made a really cool green frog out of clay in Mrs. Kazarian's art class. I love, I loved art class. Still love art class. I wonder if you do. Do you like artwork? I bet you do. Creating things is always really fun for me. Well, Mrs. Kazarian came over to my workbench in class one day, and she was looking serious. Uh, you know, which is always a little scary if your teacher's looking serious. And then she said, Ben, will you please stay after class today? I would like to talk with you. Uh-oh. <laughs> this can't be good, I thought. Am I in trouble? Teachers don't usually ask you to stay after class unless there's something that you did wrong. However, I was not in trouble at all this time. I stayed after class along with two other art class friends of mine. Their names were Ben and Christina. Ben and Christina and Ben, she said, because my name is Ben too. You three students, I have some good news for you. What could it be, I thought. I was so excited. She said, the three of you have been chosen to be a part of a team. Well, chosen to be a part, be on a team? What are you talking about? You three have been chosen to be a team of artists, she said. A team of artists? Well, that sounded good because of the artwork part. I love making art, but honestly, I was not very excited about being part of a team. It's not because I just thought that was a bad thing. It was because I didn't really know what it meant to be a part of a team. She said, well, you three have been chosen to become a team of artists, who will create this year's chocolate sculpture for the annual Chocolate Fest celebration. Your job is to make a huge sculpture, one that the whole town of Burlington will see, along with thousands and thousands of other people, and you get to make whatever you want. And, she said, you won't be working with clay, and you won't be using wood, or metal, or paper, or paint, like we often do in art class, or anything like that, you only get to use one single thing to make this whole sculpture. What is that? What are you talking about? She said, the one thing you get to use is chocolate. <laughs> no way! Christina, my friend, she yelled out. She had a big smile. Oh, we were so excited. We get to make with cho chocolate. But then you might ask, why would we build a chocolate sculpture? That's a very odd kind of thing to do, isn't it? Well, let me explain here for a second. You see, in Burlington, Wisconsin, which is a very small town, even still today, there is a giant, and I mean a huge Nestle chocolate factory. And they make chocolate bars there and those crunch bars, you know, that have the Rice Krispies in them. And they make chocolate-covered raisins there that are called Raisinets. And they make chocolate-covered peanuts, which are called goobers. <laughs> oh, and they make chocolate chips, too. You like chocolate chip cookies? I do. Well, guess what? In our town, in Burlington, the air outside, when you went outside from your house in the morning, it often smelled like chocolate. And I, not many towns in the world smell like chocolate. But Burlington, Wisconsin does. And you could smell it all the time. Now, that was pretty cool. Because of this giant chocolate factory in our little tiny town, Burlington also had a very big celebration every year that all of the townspeople would come out for, and it was called Chocolate Fest. And not only all the Burlington people came out for a big, huge party, but tens of thousands of other people from all over would come to our little city. And we had a big parade. Do you like parades? I love parades. We had a big parade, and then... 
This is the chocolate festival parade, so you can just imagine from the floats, ah, they're throwing buckets full of raisinets and goobers and those little chocolate candy bars. Oh, man, it was awesome. It was so cool. And then outside of the parade, we had musicians in a big tent, and there was a carnival that had a Ferris wheel and rides and game. Oh, my goodness, what fun. Chocolate fest, especially for the kids was absolutely fantastic. And here's the coolest part. At least I thought it was the coolest part. Every year for the big chocolate fest celebration, the city would choose one artist in the town, and that person, he or she, would have to build a giant chocolate sculpture. And then that sculpture would be on display all week long, and everybody could come and take pictures and see the artwork. Usually, they chose professional artists who would create the sculpture, but this year, they chose our team of students to build it, and that was the team that I got to be a part of. So, that was the coolest thing, and then we started to do this work. Mrs. Kazarian told us, meet at the chocolate factory next week after school. So... There, Ben and Christina and I got to the chocolate factory to start working. And oh my goodness, whoa, it was huge. Imagine the tallest ceilings that you've ever seen. And when we came in, we had to put hair nets over our hair, just like all of the other chocolate factory workers. I kind of felt like an Oompa Loompa in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, you know. You should have seen it. And the chocolate, oh, you should have seen the chocolate chip machine. It was the size of my house. Millions and millions of chocolate chips it was making every single week. It was so cool. And then after we put our hair nuts on and they, we walked through the chocolate chip section, then we went through the raisinette section where they're chocolate covering the raisins. And then we walked through the goobers section where they make the peanuts that are covered in chocolate until... We came to a little metal door on the back wall, and it led to our art studio. This is where you kids are going to be working, the boss told us. We have a special space for you. It was, oh my goodness, campers, I cannot even describe this to you. It was unreal. The art room where all of your art supplies are chocolate. <laughs> the blocks you use are chocolate. The paint you use is chocolate. Everything was chocolate. It was like I, it was like being in a dream. We had a big, huge stainless steel table that we got to use for building on. Then we had a huge metal tub that was filled. It was a warm tub. It was plugged in and hot, and it was filled with melted chocolate and had big dipping spoons that you could scoop it up with. And then we had stacks, stacks and stacks of these chocolate bars that weighed, each bar weighed 10 pounds. I'll just tell you, at the end of this project, the chocolate factory gave each of us our own 10-pound chocolate bar to take home as a thank you gift. <laughs> it was so cool. Well, we had huge stacks of 10-pound chocolate bars, and we got to use them like bricks to build. And get this, we even had a chocolate sprayer. Yeah, we could use this little handle thing that kind of looked like a squirt gun, but it shot out melted chocolate. And we could use it for spraying on textures and that kind of stuff. Oh my goodness, it was so cool. And the boss told us, and I'm not joking, he said, when you guys are working, feel free to snack on as much chocolate as you want to. And I just have to be honest with you, there were plenty of days where we were working on our project where we all went home with tummy aches because <laughs> we ate too much chocolate. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, I think you can tell that this was all very, very fun. Being a part of this project was going to be awesome. However, being a part of a team was not easy. Teamwork is different than just doing whatever you want to do on your own. So on our very first day, we had to make a decision as a team. And the first decision was, what sculpture are we going to build? What should we create out of all of this chocolate? Well, my friend Ben wanted to start making a spaceship. And Christina, 
she really wanted to start making a butterfly. And I really wanted to start making a frog. Now, I'm not sure why. I was really into frogs at that time, I guess. So I, let's make a giant chocolate frog, I said. Well, have you ever had that happen is my question for you. Have you ever been together with your friends or maybe your brothers and sisters and, and you can't decide on what to do? And then everybody wants to do their own thing, like a different thing. And then everybody just starts arguing to get, uh, you know, against each other. Well, I think that happens to all of us. But I have to tell you, teams cannot just keep arguing. They have to learn to work together to do what we call teamwork. Well, Ben and I were not good at being a team yet. And I started to argue. I say we make a spaceship, was what my friend Ben said. And I said, I say we make a frog. And then my friend Christina said, well, I say butterfly. And then Ben said, no, spaceship. And I said, no, frog. No, 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 we said to each other. No, it has to be a butterfly. That's the only good choice. And there we were on our first day of chocolate building, and we could not stop arguing with each other. I wanted my way and only my way. And my teammates wanted their way and only their way. Now, here's a secret. Did you know that onlyness leads to loneliness? It's true. I learned that from a man named Trey Anastasio, and I think that he was talking about teamwork. He said that when your day is filled with only, you'll find yourself quite lonely. And that was true. <laughs> we were working to get our way only. And we were all in the same room, but we still felt lonely, like we were on our own and then fighting with each other instead of being a team. But teams work together. Teams say, here's what I want, but that's not the only way. I will also listen to you and work with you. And my fellow campers, I can promise you this. I, you will not build great things or do creative work, and, and you cannot have good adventures if you refuse to work as a team by only fighting to get your way. And then Christina stopped saying, no, only my way. And instead she said, yes. Well, what do you mean? Yes, what? I asked her. And she said, yes, we can do what you guys want to do. I'm just excited about building with all of this chocolate. Who gets to use chocolate to build sculptures? So let's just decide on something and then start making it. Let's make it out of chocolate. Christina was a wonderful teammate. She understood what it meant. And she led us into a better friendship and into good, good teamwork. So I said, yes, let's do the spaceship or we'll do the butterfly, whatever you guys want to do. And then the other Ben said, yeah, let's build the frog or the butterfly, whatever you guys want to do. Or, Christina said, and she was now thinking of a newer and even better idea, what if we did a house? Yes, the other Ben said, but not just a regular house, a stone cottage kind of house and a big one. Yes, I said, and let's build a, a house, one that's made out of stone, but even bigger than a cottage. Let's build a stone castle, a giant one. Yes, yes, yes. And we were all saying yes to each other, and we were all adding good ideas to the one that our team was inventing. It was so much better than arguing with each other. That same man that I told you about, his name is Trey Anastasio, he also taught me that working on a team means that you are often going to be saying two words to each other. You'll be saying yes, and you'll be saying the word and. Yes, and. Rather than say no to your teammates, you learn to say yes, let's do that, and let's add this other good thing too. 
So campers, can you remember those two important things? One is that onlyness leads to loneliness. And the other one is that teams say yes and. So we all agreed to make the chocolate castle and we were totally stoked. So the next day we arrived and we started building. We stacked 10 pound blocks of chocolate, one after another, making the walls tall and strong. And we couldn't glue them together because nobody wants to eat glue. So we squished melted chocolate between the blocks. And then when it cooled, they stayed in place. So it was like chocolate glue. Soon the walls were built all the way up, but then we had a problem. It looked like a big shiny box of chocolate. The, the bricks of chocolate were smooth. But stone castles are not shiny and smooth. They're rough like stone on the outside. Well, I said, well, let's use our carving tools and rough it up and make it look bumpy. Yes, my friend Ben said. And instead of using carving tools, let's use that chocolate spraying tool. Yes, said my friend Christina. And let's spray it all clumpy so it looks like stones. Now we were working as a team. And Ben got the chocolate sprayer, and I put a bunch of more melted chocolate into the melting pot, and we went to work. And we built the walls and sprayed chocolate all over the edges to make it look like stones. And then we built a chocolate tower in the middle, over six feet tall, and like the one that you see in the Disney castle pictures. And then we made chocolate sidewalks and chocolate trees, and we made chocolate squirrels and rabbits and chocolate grass, and then chocolate swimming pools. And we sprinkled raisinets and goobers all around, and they looked like stones on little paths. It was like a fantasy castle made of chocolate. And we were not good teammates at first, and we had lots of arguments and disagreements. But we continued to say yes to each other and then add our own good ideas. And it was awesome. Guess what? Soon we had a chocolate castle that was taller than we were. Six feet tall, even bigger. And then it was six feet wide and about five feet deep. It took up the entire table. And every part of it looked so good. And every part of it also looked so tasty. <laughs> we were very proud as we looked at our chocolate castle when it was finally complete. It was beautiful. And we realized... None of it could have happened if we had not learned to work as a team. Well, when the city people put it on display at Chocolate Fest, it was true. Tens of thousands of people came to see the sculpture. The newspaper took pictures and put it on the page, front page of the newspaper, and our sculpture team was famous for a week. But then came the very hard part, and I did not tell you about this part earlier because it's kind of sad. The tradition at the end of Chocolate Fest is to chop up the chocolate sculpture into a million little pieces and then sell. They sell all of the pieces and then they use all of the money raised to help the people in town who needed help. So on the last day, we watched as they took big steel knives and chisels and they chopped up our entire chocolate castle into a million little pieces and everybody in the town got to take a chunk home and eat a part of our beautiful castle. And you know what? When I saw all of the townspeople eating our chocolate creation, I realized that my team was not just my team of artist friends, Ben and Christina. My team was actually our whole town. The city leaders, the chocolate fest people, my school and the teachers there, even Mrs. Kazarian, my art teacher. This whole project happened because we had all worked together as a big team. And that made me feel close to other people. And I felt good about myself and good about my neighborhood and about all of the people who lived. I felt alive. Building that chocolate castle was a great adventure, and I will never forget it. And being a part of a team, I learned, is way better than being lonely. And ever since then, I have loved working in teams. Campers, this is my hope for you. I hope that you too can learn the goodness and the fun of working as a team, being part of something more than just only you, belonging with others and working together. What a good adventure that will be. Teamwork is good. 
And who knows? Maybe, just maybe, you could join a team of kids who build something beautiful out of chocolate one day. I don't know. It happened to me. <laughs> oh, it's very good. Well, that brings us to the end of our third week of camp. But actually, it's not the end. As you know by now, at the very end, we have the weekly challenge. So I'm going to be right back with our weekly challenge. And let me just give you a hint. This week, we're going to build something. Something that you might be able to eat. Something awesome. So just hang on, and we will come right back to give you this week's weekly challenge. All right, campers, are you ready for this challenge? I need you to grab your Legos or other building blocks that you have, maybe some marshmallows and toothpicks. How about sugar cubes or anything else that you can think of that you can build with? Because this week's challenge is to build a castle. Yeah, that's the challenge. Okay, here's what I want you to do. You can do this challenge alone if you want to, and that's wonderful and good. But if possible, I really want you to try to work on this project with others as a team, doing teamwork. You can team up with your grown-ups or your grown-up or maybe with your friends or your brothers and sisters, whomever you can find that wants to build with you, all right? Then I want you to work together to build a castle. Now, you can do any kind of castle. You do a big one. You can do a tiny little castle. It can have walls and turrets like my chocolate castle did, or it can also have no walls, no turrets. You could make it round or square. You could make it triangle-shaped if you want. Anything that you create will be so good. Then, after you decide on what kind of castle you want to build, you got to decide what you want to build it with. Now, you can go, if your grown-up will take you down to the grocery store, sugar cubes are pretty cheap, and you can glue them together. That holds them. You can make a really cool-looking castle that way. But also, like my son Wesley, he's got Legos all over the place. You could use wooden blocks or Legos, any kind of building toys for awesome castle building. I'm positive that some of you have already built castles before in your lifetime. And you might not have thought of this one, but if you get a bag of those big marshmallows, the kind you roast over a fire, and then a box of toothpicks, you can stick those toothpicks into the marshmallows and build walls and ceilings and whatever you want. You just kind of keep sticking them together with the toothpicks. You make a whole castle out of marshmallows. <laughs> I've seen it done. It's really cool. And that sure would be tasty when it comes time to chop it all up and eat it, if you know what I mean. But if you make it out of Legos, I have to tell you, don't eat the castle at the end, because that would be way too crunchy on your teeth and probably not very good for your tummy. <laughs> now, here's the last instruction. When you've built your castle, please send me some pictures or videos that show me what you're making. I think they will be the finest creations in all the nation, and we will be able to feature them in our next week of camp when we open up the mailbag together. Remember how we do that as a team? I think it sounds good. Sound good to you? Sounds very good to me. So, my friends and campers of Camp Adventure, this week I say yes to you as my teammates. And I cannot wait to see what you build. Most importantly, I hope that you learn to love working on teams with other people because, like I've told you before, being a part of a team is being a part of a great adventure. So I'll see you soon, campers. I'll see you next week. But in the meantime, get out there and build and build as teammates, okay? All right. Ari, back to you. Thanks, Ben. And thank you, campers, for joining us at Camp Adventure this week. We'd love to feature you and your fellow campers on our next episode. Share your camp space and all of your weekly camp challenge creations on social media using hashtag AKBA Summer. Or write to us at listen at a kids podcast about dot com. Camp Adventure is written by Ben Tertine with help from the A Kids Podcast About team. Original music is by Hannah Glaver. Check out Hannah's albums at hannahglaver.bandcamp.com. This show is edited and produced by Matthew Winner, with help from me, Ari Mathay. The show is produced by Chad Michael Snavely, 
and the team at Sound On Studios. Our executive producer is Jelani Memory. And this show was brought to you by a kids podcast about. Listen to other shows made for kids just like you by visiting a kidsbookabout.com. While you're there, be sure to check out Ben's book, A Kid's Book About Adventure. See you back at Camp Adventure next week. Hi, this is Matthew, and I'm head of podcast at a kid's company about. We hope you enjoyed this show, and we'd love for you to check out our growing library of shows at a kid's podcast about. Whether you're looking for storytelling with crafts and activities, fact-finding with experts and enthusiasts, or looking to explore and understand your world better, we have got a podcast for you. Check out the A Kids Podcast About channel on Apple Podcasts or wherever podcasts are found, or visit akidsco.com.